Most gardeners think mulch is just something you add on top of soil to keep weeds down and moisture in. Bark chips, straw, plastic sheets spread evenly and forgotten. But, you know, nature does not mulch that way. In wild systems, mulch is not a product and not a single layer. It's actually a living process, constantly renewing itself from the top down and the bottom up at the same time. Once I stopped copying hardware store mulch and started copying ecosystems, my soil changed faster than it ever did with compost alone. This is the ecosystem mulch trick nature uses everywhere, and most gardeners unknowingly ignore it. Why natural landscapes never leave soil exposed for long? In forests, grasslands and old field systems, bare soil is a temporary condition. Leaves fall, stems collapse, roots die back, insects shred material, fungi stitch it together, and soil organisms pull it downward. This creates a layered blanket that protects the ground while feeding it continuously. Ancient farmers noticed, you know, that the most fertile soils existed where plant debris accumulated undisturbed year after year. They didn't call it mulch, they called it living ground. Why conventional mulching misses the point? Most modern mulching focuses on coverage, not function. Thick wood chips or straw placed on bare soil act as insulation, but often fail biologically. Without connection to living roots and soil organisms, they decompose slowly and sometimes even repel water. Nature's mulch works because it is connected to the ecosystem above and below it. You see, it is fed by roots pushing sugars upward and organisms pulling carbon downward. When gardeners treat mulch as a dead layer instead of part of a cycle, well, they really lose most of its power. So, how does the ecosystem mulch trick actually work? The real trick is vertical integration. In natural systems, mulch is created by plants growing, dying, falling and decomposing right there in place. Roots remain in the soil when tops die back, creating channels and feeding microbes. Surface litter is constantly disturbed by insects, worms and weather, breaking it into fragments that are slowly absorbed into the soil. Nothing is removed. Nothing is isolated. The mulch layer is thin, uneven and always changing, which prevents compaction and encourages rapid biological activity. What changed when I stopped removing plant residues? The biggest shift happened when I stopped cleaning my garden. After harvest, I cut plants at ground level and left roots intact. Stems were chopped and laid directly on the soil surface instead of composted elsewhere. So weeds were cut and dropped rather than pulled. And, you know, within just a few weeks, fungal threads started to appear under all that debris. The soil, well, it stayed cooler during the heat and a bit warmer during those cold snaps. Water soaked in instead of just running off. Honestly, the garden began mulching itself faster than I could ever manage by hand. Why does diversity matter more than thickness? Well, nature, it rarely piles mulch deep in one uniform layer. Instead, it builds diversity, and that's the real secret. 
Leaves, stems, seed heads, fine roots, coarse roots, and, you know, even insect remains all break down at different speeds. This staggered decay, well, it feeds soil organisms continuously rather than all at once. Gardeners who rely on a single mulch material often see, um, feast and famine cycles underground. Mixing plant residues naturally avoids this problem and honestly supports a broader soil food web. So, here's how this method suppresses weeds without smothering the soil. Living mulch systems don't rely on suffocation. Instead, they rely on competition and timing. Thin layers of constantly renewed organic matter block light, just enough to prevent mass germination while still allowing air and water through. Seeds that do sprout are easier to manage because the soil underneath remains loose and biologically active. Weed pressure drops gradually rather than disappearing instantly, which is exactly how stable ecosystems behave. You know, ancient farming systems quietly used this method. Slash and mulch systems forest gardens and traditional polycultures all relied on in-place decomposition. Crops were grown among residues of previous growth. Fields were rested but never cleared. Nutrients cycled locally instead of being exported. These systems lasted centuries because they mimicked how nature maintains fertility without erosion or exhaustion. The ecosystem mulch trick isn't new. It's actually older than agriculture itself. So here's how gardeners can, you know, put this into practice right away without needing to buy a single thing. Begin by simply changing your removal habits. Instead of pulling everything out, leave the roots in the soil when your plants are finished. Then just chop up the spent growth and spread it right where it grew. Try allowing some plants to, well, complete their life cycle, rather than clearing everything out too early. And remember to water gently. This helps the organisms below move all that material downward. Over time, take notice of how the soil texture changes and how quickly those residues seem to disappear. The aim isn't to have a perfectly tidy surface, but rather an active, living one. Now, you might be wondering why this method outperforms compost-heavy systems in the long run. Well, compost is certainly valuable, but it's still an external input. Ecosystem mulching, on the other hand, builds fertility from within, fostering a self-sustaining soil that just keeps getting better over time. Nutrients, you see, move only short distances, while carbon tends to stay put, and soil organisms, well, they adapt to the local conditions around them. Gardens, over time, become less dependent on constant additions, and honestly, far more resilient to stress. Once this system is established, it pretty much maintains itself with minimal effort. So, why do gardeners resist this approach? Well, for one, it looks a bit messy. It also challenges long-held habits and, you know, it requires a certain trust in processes you can't fully see. But every healthy wild system out there proves that it works. Sure, order is comforting, but at the end of the day, function matters more. The most productive soils on Earth they're not neat, 
they are, in fact, alive. If this guide has changed how you think about mulch and soil life, do make sure to subscribe to the Hydrohaven channel. And please share this with gardeners, growers and history-minded land stewards who want results grounded in how nature actually works. When you mulch like an ecosystem, the garden, well, it does the rest.